Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. I do say this every single time, but it's not hard to see why this is my favourite time of day, is it? Just look at that. Not a breath of wind at the minute. I can just see here the waves and the birds. <sighs> got a super moon hiding somewhere behind that. We've got <laughs> super tides, we're absolutely screaming along. They're massive. Super sunrise. What better way to start a day? I'm going to try and head out. I'm going to try and fish over an area of reef with lures and live baits. There's not much else you can do when a tide is this big. Tides are absolutely massive. Try and do some low fishing, maybe do some live baits if we can find any. Just see where the day will take us. I am just happy to be out on a day like today. It is absolutely stunning, isn't it? Let's go! Well, that is a fantastic way to start. Talk about a perfect way to start. Right, gently does it. Oh, well, the lure's out. But there you go. A stunning bar of gold, isn't it? He's actually seen a hook before. You can see the hole in his mouth on the other side. Brilliant! <laughs> well, that was... Uh, I was just steaming about and I thought, I'll tell you what, that pinnacle looks alright. I'll try that. Yeah, I'm glad I did. Where are we now? What are we doing? What are we doing? They're all snarled up in it. Yeah, that was a very simple, just sink and draw. And it is a little leaded lure. This is a storm, I think it's a storm blue mackerel. And all I've done was I just kind of tossed it out a little bit of a distance from the boat. And I was just bouncing it back along the bottom. There are loads of jellyfish today. I mean, literally, there's. I can count ten in this little area. They're all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, easily ten. Anyway, I've had a fish. Let's get where we're going. Well, I've made it where I'm going. I've got to the area reef that I want to fish on today and we're just coming up to slack water. We've got about another half an hour of the flood. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to mess around with my soft plastic lures, see if I can't catch a couple of live bits over slack water and then as the tide decides what it wants to do, we will fish around the reef. Targets today are going to be pollock, possibly bass, possibly cod. Anything we can catch, I'm just keen to be out. The, uh, the water has picked up an awful lot of plankton lately. It, uh, it is very snotty. Ooh, missed it. Ah, I missed it. That was more like a ras, that. Might come up and I might have no tail left on my lure now. They're terrible for doing that, ras. Oh no, we're all right. That's taking a chomp out of it though. <laughs> Glad about that. I like this lure. 
I don't know, do you get sentimental about lures? I've got some lures in my lure box that I've never used. When people ask me, oh why? I just say, because it's my favourite. <laughs> it's not my favourite for any other reason than I like looking at it. How deep are we? 62 feet. Drift's only slow, I might switch to a smaller lure. Put a little allure on. When the tide isn't running as fast, you can get away with a small allure. Obviously, when it starts picking up again, I'm going to have to put the heavier lure back on. See what we can't find with this little guy. This is more like it. This is more like me. Might even be able to come out of the house soon without two layers on. Predatory fish don't like to feed so much when the tide's slack. You'll find that you'll fish over an area of reef, the same area of reef, Drifting over, nothing changes except the tide. It's like water, you'll get nothing. As soon as the tide starts to push, you'll start picking fish up. The fish are there, the fish are constantly there. They're just not feeding. Another lovely pollock. And the lures just pop straight out again. They're good at unhooking themselves, these pollock. There we go. Well fed anyway, whatever they're feeding on, I need to find some of that. If you can release them head first like that, so they like torpedo into the water, they go back loads better. Some fish need like a gentle release, like a carp release. I was talking to I was talking to one of my friends called Nathan. He's got another. He's got a channel called Slippy Limpets. Uh, we were talking about this because he was receiving a little bit of flack from people who thought that they were uh, possibly with the best intentions, telling him to have better fish care. They're obviously used to catching things like carp. But carp need a gentle, slow release, whereas things like pollock, they go back better when you throw them in, when you when you guide them in head first like that. I don't usually wear sunglasses. I don't like it because I always end up with like a suntan line, like a raccoon. But when the sun's so low in the sky, it really does hurt your eyes. I could see a lot of birds working just over there. In 10 minutes, if I, haven't find, if I haven't found any sand eels or anything on them feathers, I'll go over there and try and find some. I do enjoy this type of fishing. Pollock fishing generally on, on wrecks, when they're in deep water, the fish won't go back. They suffer really badly with barotrauma. But when you're fishing on shallow reefs like this and with light line and light lures, nine times out of 10, you can release the fish. And you get great sport from it. I think there's a ras down there chasing this. Keeps giving it a nip every now and again. Oh, 
I missed it. This is something that I'll make comment on. I've had this conversation with people before about hooks. What people think are strong hooks. My people are going, oh well my hook's bent out, it's not very strong. I would rather that a hook bends than snaps. Like these for instance, I've just got this snagged into the bottom. And all I did there was, I give it some space, I let out some line off to see if I could free it up. And then when I couldn't, I just put a glove on and I just very gently just pulled it. And eventually all that's happened, look, is I've bent the hook and it's come out. That's what it started off like, that's what it's ended up like. I've kept this lure. You will do you will have to work very hard to bend a hook out on a pollock or a bass because it'll pull drag off. So yeah, that's my opinion anyway. And perfectly when you just have a pair of these, you just bend them straight back. I see. Yeah. One of the things is though, I mean generally, just by the type of steel, hooks that you can get really sharp are generally more brittle. So susceptible to breaking at the bend. It's heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking that. I still remember one, I was fishing for the Navy on a boat competition and this was probably in, it'll have been 2011. So yeah, 10 years ago and I remember losing a fish because a hook snapped. So it stays with you. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about losing fish. Let's see if we can't find some. Quite a heavy fish this. <laughs> it's one of the beautiful things about this type of fishing. When I hooked it I thought, oh I know what that is. I don't know what it is now. Oh it's a nice pollock. <laughs> I love it. Calm yourself down. Calm yourself down, lad. Ooh. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. I am gonna get I'm gonna get a photo of this guy because he's in lovely condition. Sadly this hook, this lure, because it had engulfed it, it had gone all the way right down into its gill. So it's nicked one of its gills, this guy isn't gonna survive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dispatch him and I'm gonna keep him, take him home for the table. I did manage to catch one live bait. Just the one. <laughs> and I had to do some steaming around to find it. So all I'm gonna be using is my simple sliding float rig. That has a 141 gram sliding float with a locked in lead and about 4 feet of 20 pound fluoro hook length ending in a 6 o cox and roll chinoo. And when I can find where my live bait is, just a live sand eel. Sand eel, lawns, a few different names for the same thing. Do me a favour and keep an eye on that float for me. And at the same time, hopefully, I'm going to fish some lures. A 
sand eels are just hard to come by. I have used quite a few other things before though. Little wrasse, blennies, gobies, little whiting, pouting, poor cod. Even little tiny pollock. I've, I've hooked a little pollock on a set of feathers and had another pollock take it. This reef system that we're in here is anything from like 35 feet all the way down to like 65 feet. So you really have to be on the ball. Give myself a little bit of a kick away from that float. Not only is that so that the bait isn't underneath the shadow of the boat, but it gives me more time to react. Whatever that is, that's a big fish, that. Oh, what's going down? That's a fish as well. I think that... That's a big fish. Now that is a massive pollock. That's a double figure pollock that. And at the same time... <sighs> oh, it's all kicking off! That's another double figure pollock. Did you see that? <laughs> Whoa. I was trying not to get too excited while I was doing it, but ah, flipping heck, that's probably going to be my best ever double hookup. I've got two double figure pollock, landed them as a double hookup, one on low, one on live bait. Single handed. Oh my word! I honestly, I, 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 I can't do it justice. The size of these two fish here in this net. I'm gonna have to get the camera and I'll show you the size of the fish in the net. <sighs> I'm sorry if I was being real quiet, but that was serious concentration. 
<laughs> I'll show you them now. I can't really do this justice because there's nothing there for bearing and scale. But that's two double figure pollock in the net at the same time. One on a live bait, one on a lure. Look at size of them, they're absolute monsters. Flippy neck. <laughs> right. <laughs> I hope that bit of phone footage was all right because I can't take the camera off to show you. One of the pollocks has actually shaken the lure off so I've only got one still hooked up. I don't know how I'm going to lift these aboard. Flipping heck! Oh. Stop carrying on. Right. Unclip the hook length. Get the rod out of the way. Get the other rod out of the way. Right. This one. This one was the live bait. Look at the size of that. Look at the just how thick it is. And there's the hook in the corner of its mouth. Whoop, easy. There look. Just like that. What an absolute monster. In fact, actually, you just sit in that bucket of water there for a second. This one, this one was the one on the lure. Just an absolute chunk, the pair of them. Look at the size of them. Just, oh my God. <laughs> He'll be alright there in that live bait tank for two seconds. <sighs> what? <laughs> you just never know, dear. Just absolutely nothing, and then all of a sudden all hell breaks loose. Yes! I am going to keep one of those Pollock, and I'm going to let him. Um, the biggest one, I am going to let it go, and I'm going to keep the other one. And that was that was absolutely fantastic. I've got it recovered in this wow, easy just look at the size of that and steady ready well done perfect just go straight back yes yeah, so uh, some fantastic pollock for the table that one live bait so all that extra effort just to find that one live bait was worth it because straight away, bang, as soon as I had it down there, like I was saying, and the tides just started to push. I'm actually, um, I'm going to start him back. <laughs> There's no point being greedy, is there? I might stop off and try out a new place on the way home. And uh, yeah, we'll see how we do. Just popped over to say hello to these guys. You can see them there. There's one under the water. Well, I'll tell you what, they are fast. One thing you'll have to take my word for is the smell. Oh, bless you. There's the seabed. 
There's a big bull seal over there. A big fat bull. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there's three more on there. size of him. I don't know if you can see him swimming under the water there but he's really cool. I think on that note we will say goodbye. I hope you've enjoyed joining us. All the very best. See you later.